It's time for some funny business with AG. We're talking switching off, business isolation, celebrating milestones, all with a spattering of nudity. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. Welcome back, you motivated business owner, you, to the world's number one marketing show. I am your host, Timbo Reid, and today it's a very, very special day because it is another episode, episode 10, actually, of Funny Business. That is where I get together (laughs) with that cheeky little monkey we lovingly referred to as AG, as Griffo, as Andrew Griffiths, number one small business author in Australia, if not the world. So um, we've got a lot of topics to cover. I'm just going to head over, get through all this jungle muck. He lives up in Cairns, and we're going to talk cyclones very shortly, uh, and head over to the monkey cage. You can hear them in the background there. They're a noisy bunch. He's the big one sitting in the corner under the tree. There he is. (laughs) <laughs> Rippo, how are you, mate? And they said our show, you know, funny business wouldn't last nine episodes, hey? Who? So how, how wrong? Well, you know? don't get too cocky. This is 10. We've got to get through it. Yeah, and, true. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's not put a number on it. We tried to do this last week. And in fact, you know what? They could have been right almost because you were stuck oh. in the middle of a cyclone. Good old Cyclone Ida. Welcome to to living in the harsh, wild extremes of Cairns. Gee, mate. Tropical you were North the, Queensland. Under the pump. Mate, absolutely. But, you know, we survive. We go on. We did attempt to uh, to try and do a funny business, but there was nothing funny, really. When I, I was screaming like a little girl, terrified, <laughs> hiding under the couch, wondering if I would die, you know, leaving everything to you in my will, yeah, yeah, standard yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, it always gets a bit blowy. A bit blowy, hey? Don't you love that? Our American listeners will go, are you Australians? You're so laconic. Is that the right word? Laconic? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that'll, that'll quite work. Quite a good word. I like that. But you, you, it was. It was a big one. And, and Ita, why Ita? Any, any reason? Oh, I think I think the people in the weather bureau just had a bit of a thing in it yeah. for uh, Ida Buttrose, Ida obviously. Buttrose. You know, yeah. there's a bit of a thing there. She Great she song. certainly creates a, a wake. Um, yeah, but they're pretty wild. I don't know though. You know, I mean, we're all a bit terrified, and anyone who's come to North Queensland is not afraid of a cyclone until they've been through one. Right. And once they've been through one, everything changes. Yes. You know, it gets serious. But in the old days, what used to happen? The minute they announced the cyclone, you had to rush to the bottle shop. That's where the blockage was. There was <laughs> at the drive-in <laughs> bottle shop. There was just chaos and pandemonium. Now we're a bit more sophisticated, and we just go and buy everything off the shelves at uh, at the local store. No well, you know what? Water. The the place in the world with the highest incidence, and I, I texted, I think, this to you last week whilst you were in the Thank eye you. of the storm. <laughs> the place in the world with the highest incidence of mental illness is also the windiest place in the world, and it's in Scotland. I don't know yep. the name of it. If anyone does, please let us know, but... There you go, mate. You know, that wind does get up your nelly, so to speak. We've got our own share of crazy in this neck of the woods. Don't you worry. <laughs> do. You know, we've got plenty. I'm an advocate for it. Now, Griffo, <laughs> we've got a bit to talk about today. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to touch on this whole topic of webinars and being sold to. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we've got a bit of a response on this pop-up store discussion that uh, we had on the last episode of Funny Business. I want to talk to you about... Celebrity testimonials. Uh, mm-hmm. You want to talk about be careful what you reflect. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you switch off? We're going to talk about whether or not I should put together some celebration as I near episode 200 of this this show. We've got a lot to Absolutely. cover, mate. We have. We so, have. And uh, I'm pretty uh, excited. I'm just looking. We're actually videoing this, listeners, and um, I am actually looking Griffo in the eye, and he's got this... Would you call that a Hawaiian kind of shirt? or It's, it's an orchid shirt. It's actually mm. a little thing of orchids. Tommy Bahama. I'm a brand boy. Oh, is that a... I've never heard of Tommy Bahama, actually. Who's Tommy Bahama? Is he some Hawaiian yeah. surfer or something, is he? I think so, yeah, yeah. Right. I think some overpriced American <laughs> brand, basically, yeah, yeah. that I'm a sucker for because yeah, yeah. I love marketing. And have you ever <laughs> been on a surfboard? I have, but that's just such an ugly story (laughs) (laughs) on so many different levels. It was sponsored by Greenpeace, I think. Love it. it. Now, Griffo, uh, let's get stuck in, mate. Small business, big marketing with Tim Reid. Funny message from, we did a webinar, listeners, Mm. about two or three weeks ago. Griffo and I did a webinar for, I think it was for Telstra. It was. And uh, it was all about time-saving ideas and productivity. 
Absolutely. And we did get some lovely feedback, but some specific feedback that you got. Well, it, 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 interesting, isn't it, mate? Because I think one of the things... That, I, I don't know about our listeners here, but I assume that everyone is... Uh, it, are actually involved doing the odd webinar. You know, we're kind of used to There's a lot of people promoting webinars. Every second email is about a webinar. And uh, apart from the fact that half of them are so boring, I'd rather <laughs> have my fingernails pulled off than listen in on them. But the, the, the other, the real issue is that the, the feedback that I got from a number of people was how refreshing it was to sit in and listen to a webinar where they weren't being sold to. Uh. And, and I thought, how that, that's a really interesting point. I didn't, you and I, I don't think we do sell on webinars. I mean, I, I do a lot of webinars and my objective is never to sell. Yet I wonder how m- most webinars are. And I actually went back through a list of 30 webinar invites I've had over the years, uh, over the, sorry, over the last few months. And they were all selling something. They were all, it was all like listening for 15 minutes and then 45 minutes of selling. And yeah. I kind of look at it and go, well, isn't that a, a typical way of eroding a great way to connect with your audience yeah. by just sell, sell, sell all the time? You know, that you know whole I think it's uh, beyond measure. webinars too. I've I've got a thing um, on on the small business big marketing website now. There's a dedicated blog that Net Registry, who are a sponsor of this show, uh, have have set up. Now on that blog, basically you can go there, you can leave your name and email address, and you have 250 characters to ask an online marketing question, which mm-hmm. Net Registry will answer. Yeah, now cool. it, it happened, and they've answered about 15 so far. Now, one of the people who asked a question last week, they got their answer and they've left a comment underneath the blog post to say, wow, thank you so much for such a detailed answer and you didn't even try to sell me. Mm -hmm. And it's like we do, I think as you know, we talk about insights into, into our customers, into our prospects. And I think as a key insight, business owners should be more aware that people are walking into your business almost expecting to be sold to but hoping they're not. Yeah, there's a bit of fatigue, you know, bit of with, fatigue. with information. We're going to share this great information with you, but in a webinar environment, we're going to share some great information, but we're not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, what but, we're going but, to do is, is we're going to, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a great process. It's going to be life changing. But you've got to buy this program to get it. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. So the webinar is really nothing. And I mm. personally, I've got to say, I find that insulting. Mm. Uh, I would never do a webinar like that. And I, you know, if I do, you need to come up here and, and buddy, you know, you take my banana away. You know? but, <laughs> but, I, but I do look at that and go, well, you know, there's really great information there for any of us who are doing webinars. If you don't like being sold to, then you've got to speak up and talk about it. But mm. also those of you delivering webinars, say, so make them great information. Connect with yeah. your audience. You help them. Be helpful. You know, Very helpful, mate. It's my new mantra, the helpful business. And I think, you know, wonderful. many, many businesses are scared to give away too much information. And they feel as though they need to attach the big sell. But um, uh, no, as Gary Vaynerchuk says in his new book, jab, 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 which is the mm-hmm. give, give, give. And every now and then a little right hook that does yep. say buy from me, but not every time. Yeah, absolutely. I think we get sick of it. Last episode, you and I spoke about pop-up stores, and you know we we have a little, we have a, a certain something for the pop-up store, don't we? We quite Love like the pop-up. Them. Love the pop-up. However, fact, I had a little pop-up open up just down the road from me that I you? just visited today. I went, how cute is this? A What's it selling? Mate? Five shop. cent lemonade or no the coffee? But it's wooden really? crates and it's an old unused kind of a building and they make great coffee and it's, everything's just there to be disappearing overnight. If <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a definite fly-by-night kind Here's of feel the cops, get the crates, get the machine, get out of here. <laughs> and you sit on that and there's a couple of bean bags in the corner and you go, this is really cool, I really like it. So oh, can you, I'd fans. love to see you in the bean bag. Can you get out of the bean bag? No, 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 it's a one-way trip. It's you a know, one-way it's, a, trip. it's a one-way journey for me, a bean bag. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Triple zero. Uh, we have a we have a, a mid aged uh, middle aged male in the bean bag at the pop up store. Uh, you send a crew and a crane and a crane. I didn't say that. You said that. No, but listen, Bronwyn Reed, no relation, but okay. I'll call her Reedy because I used to okay. get called Reedy at school or Reedos. Okay. So Reedos, she lives in Emerald up in up in the sticks up in uh, regional Queensland. Nice. And uh, she is a. A long-time listener of the show. She's also a forum member uh, of the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. And she said, hey, Timbo, and it's directed at you too, Griffo, so you're not getting out of this one, mate. Okay. We live in a country town. And she kind of stamped her hand on the desk as she wrote that. It doesn't say that, but, like, you know, she made a statement. Poetic license. Poetic license. The normal retailers live here, pay their rates, 
donate goods and services to local organisations and generally try to get on with business and being part of the community. However, pop-up stores do just that. They pop up, she says, and then they pop down again. It's quite nice, isn't she? Mm, Nice mm. kind of writing style. Mm. Um, Generally, no contribution to the community. So she gives the example of how Harvey Norman, which is, you know, the big box retailer Mm. in Australia... They set up a store at the showgrounds, park a truck, sell a few products, and then they get out, which causes warranty problems, it causes all sorts of stuff, and they don't contribute to the community. Uh, And it's often not much cheaper. So she's just giving the other side, which I quite like. I always like the other side. Yeah, me too. An Um, interesting kind of take, isn't it? Do we we agree? You're you're in regional Australia. I'm down here. I love Mm. it. I love a good pop-up. Mm. You know? I, I, look, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of agree a little bit with the old pull up the semi trailer and you open the doors and you sell seat <laughs> covers or you sell yeah. microwaves out the back. It almost feels like it used to be buying stuff at the back of the pub many years ago and all the rest of it. To me, I look at pop ups a little bit differently. Like the ones that I look at, for example, the one I mentioned a minute ago, yep. they're locals. They're, they're, they're local people. They're not fly by nighters. They haven't arrived out of somewhere and they're yeah. here to milk the economy and move on. They're just taking advantage of an empty space. Yes. you know, to do their business. So, so can, to speak. So to speak, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you could say, well, they're taking away from other businesses locally, but I actually think they're enhancing the area mm. locally. Uh, you know, mm. I, I think that, again, that where this one has popped up, there are a couple of other coffee shops. Now you've actually got a third coffee shop. The whole area has actually got a lot more busy just as a result of the cafe and, and culture I reckon that's created. The, ke- the key word here, Griffo, is interesting. And I, I agree with Bronwyn's. The, the Harvey Norman example is an ugly one. And I, too, I, I, I fully get that. Um, yeah. But if she'd given an example of the, the little beanbag coffee shop, it might have been different because the pop-up stores in the context of what we spoke about in the last episode of Funny Business, were, they were interesting and they were – I think they add to the texture and the colour of of an area. That's what mm. I've seen. And, I, and, and as I said, we said last episode, the more local councils that kind of see the opportunity to open up some vacant spaces to people who could never afford retail space, I, I just Absolutely. think it's, it's a win-win all around. So, well, and in Melbourne, last time I – or one of the recent trips to Melbourne, when mm. I bought some shoes from a pop-up, the interesting thing, they had breakfast at a cafe, uh, walked out into the laneway, there's a pop-up there. Yeah. And that, that pop-up, though, was actually a pop-up – from a, an existing retailer who had a whole pile of stock. They found an empty little space they could rent for a few yeah. weeks and sell, you know, excess stock. And they, uh, I think it's actually not a bad strategy for existing businesses. I read recently about a place in America where a chiropractor goes around and sets up oh, pop ups. Wow. So what he does, literally, he's got his main practice area, but he goes into different spaces, an empty shop or whatever, sets up as a chiropractor for huh. a day, gets a table, move there, and all the rest of it. For him, it's a marketing tool as much as um, just offering a different kind of service and he and I think he actually talks about even offering free chiropractic you know adjustments for the day to build a market and then that's part marketing tool part I guess adding to the interest of the area now, and Griffo, complimentary if you, if pop-ups you- if someone tapped you on the shoulder and said hey listen there's some space we'd love to want you to open up a pop-up store in mm. central Cairns mm. which is uh, listeners that's where Griffo lives what would you uh, what would you be selling do you think would you just oh, get up on your milk crate and start? And you might turn it into some kind of soapbox, you know, like they have in Hyde Park, where it could be a, it could be Poets Corner or yeah, something. The world according to Griffo. I don't think anyone is going to be listening to that one. I think it's going to be a bit <laughs> ugly. I was signing books though in Melbourne at um, Federation Square recently. Yeah. You know, no one asked you to. You, just, you just took a box of books, did you? I'm just signing books. And- signing. And I was at an event signing all these books in this little room, and it was only in Melbourne could this happen. Well, I'm signing like. 500 books and I looked up and there's this glass wall and there's like a group of like 100 people there looking in at the window at, at the guy signing the books right. and it was one I thought only in Melbourne can signing some books become a performance art yeah, well, so uh, that's, we my, are... that's my backup career if, you know when funny business you know stops being funny <laughs> I'm going to just find b- vacant shops and just sit in there and sign books <laughs> massive assumption that funny business is funny it's like it's, oh, so, yeah, oh, no. No, no. funny business is definitely funny now but at some point it, it's going to stop being funny <laughs> yeah. I mean, the so arrogance. The, the uh, arrogance. Glass half full kind of guy, you know. <laughs> Honestly. And by the way, listeners, he's signing books as we speak. So, uh, <laughs> multitasker. I've been doing this thing at the end of the Small Business Big Marketing Show each week where 
Um, because I get so many lovely listener reviews uh, on iTunes, as well as sent to me via email, and listeners send me send me anything really. Tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. dot com. Um, Careful what I, you wish. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I have then been going across to Fiverr and employing the services of celebrity um, voiceovers. Yeah, oh, beautiful. So, of recent weeks, I've had uh, Ron Burgundy. Well done, Timbo, on another great show. President uh, Obama. Hello, this is Barack, your commander in chief. Nice. And I got an email from one of my forum members recently suggesting, and uh, I won't mention his name, Meppy. <laughs> That's his name. Uh, and uh, he said, I'm being a bit disrespectful. Well, he thought that I might be disrespectful. He said, you know, these people are writing these wonderful words to you, Timbo, out of the goodness of their own heart because they love what you do. And you're getting some bloke out of America for five bucks to read it as Ron Burgundy? <laughs> what do you reckon? I love it. Oh, thank you. We move think, on. There you go, Mark. I think it's fabulous. <laughs> so, so come on. We got to lighten up. We got to have a little bit more fun. You know, I, I love the idea of Ron Burgundy. You know, reading out uh, testimonials and feedback. Oh, you mate, know, I, I, it was the real Ron Burgundy. Hey, I, now, but, I got, you want to talk this. funny? Oh it, yeah. It, you know, that puts funny business to shame, really, doesn't it? I mean, no, no, this is. Oh, God, he's a funny man. So, okay, well, I tend to agree with that. So two against one. Listeners, feel free to uh, share your opinions on this uh, on the, the show notes of this episode, which is 184. So, Griffo, okay. we're going to move on. We're, I'm ticking some boxes here. You know, we're covering some, some ground. Now, you reckon this is – we're going to get a bit sombre here, a little, okay. bit, little bit Nick Cave. And you yeah, reckon- that's the thing for the for the listeners here. Timbo said to me with my list of things to talk about today, he said, what, what are you on sad pills or something? Did this <laughs> yeah. all happen? I said, well, it happened during Cyclone Ida, you know. There was, there was a grey cloud hanging over. Oh, you know? well, let, let, let me just, you know, what we do, listeners, is I open up a Google Doc and I share it with Griffo and say, here's some topics that I want to cover, you know, add yours. So let me just, the Griffo adds, you know, I've got one about, you know, reaching my 200th episode, should I celebrate, you know, what should I do or move on? from it griffo adds be careful what you reflect uh what's going on in your business is clear for everyone to see outside the business his next one is how do you switch off or don't you and then his third one is oh, the third and fourth business isolation and then the fourth have you lost your mojo feeling right. flat lost your mojo how do you get it back I mean, Griffo, mate, this is the the Razor Blade episode. This is is the one. So hopefully we haven't lost any listeners yet. (laughs) You know, bear with us, believe it. It it does get positive in there somewhere. Can can I just say uh, on that point, and we're going to cover some of those topics uh, shortly, I interviewed a guy yesterday. Today's episode went out. Uh, Have you heard of a dentist, Paddy Lund? Oh, absolutely. He's legendary. Well, there you go. Legendary guy. He's he's the guy who changes... Turns the entire service dentistry <laughs> industry on its ear, you and know, he did uh, it. He did it. Amazing he, guy. He looked. At, he there was a day in his life about ten, twelve years ago where he decided oh, he's going to kill himself. Mm. Uh, he explored all the ways. He'd figured out how, and uh, instead he chose to create a happy business. And mm. um, so, uh, why am I telling you that? Because listeners, you would have heard that episode by now. But he did. He. Um, it, we, this, this was turning into a sombre episode. We promise it won't be. We promise there'll be laughs, but that was amazing. I'm going to actually refer to what Paddy did later because it's relevant mm-hmm. to one of your topics. So, Griff, nice. talk to me about this. Be careful what you reflect issue that's on your mind. Uh, this is an interesting one, and I've written a few articles about this in the past, you know, four or five months. And, and, and I think for me, what I look at this whole concept of when we're inside our business and everything's kind of happening and all the rest of it is going on, um, we have good days, we have bad days, we have challenges, we have, you know, all that whole pot combination of different things. Uh, but one of the problems that I think we have to be really careful of is we think that no one else sees what's going on in our head. So, you know, if you're a chef in a restaurant, you're having a bad day, we think that we can hide it. If, you, if you're doing it a bit tough financially, you know, you're going, oh, well, you know, I, I can hide that. No one else really knows. Or if you're, you know, just feeling sad and sorry and lost that kind of oomph about it, no one else will know. I can act. I can cover it up. And the reality is I don't think we can. I don't think we're as good at kind of hiding those things as we think we are. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it actually does have a big impact. Like, 
I think most of us are pretty good six sense wise to be able to walk into a business and get a bit of a somber feeling if things are not going well. Mm-hmm. You know, we can kind of pick up on the vibe. Something's wrong. Something's going on here. It's not good. And as human beings, we don't kind of like to go in. We don't like to buy from businesses that are going bad or that there's some kind of problem internally happening in there. So I think... What I'm trying to say in this one is is whatever is going on in our world, we do have to be a little bit careful about what are we reflecting outwards. And I see this manifesting in many ways, whether it be, you know, owners being grumpy with staff, whether it's be the service used to be great, now it's lousy. You know, what's happened? What's mm-hmm. kind of changed? Or you go to a restaurant, I usually keep using a restaurant example, one day the food's great, the next day the food's horrible. You know, it's a reflection of, of that internal stuff. So, oh, they used to- do you suggest you continue to hide it? Or obviously, fix how you're feeling is a good thing, but that's easier said than done. Or do you suggest uh, being totally transparent and just uh, be how you feel? Put out how you exa- how you feel. Don't hide it. I, I think you've got to understand how important it is that you address it and fix it. Right. That's what I'm really trying to say. I think I, I, had a, I was listening to someone the other day at a, at a news agent's and, uh, and I was waiting to buy a paper or something, and, and the lady in front of me was being served, and she asked the chap serving, oh, how's things going? He said, oh, it's terrible. You know, we're on the on the verge of shutting down. We're going to shut the shop. It's, Ooh. you know, it's terrible. It's yep. rah, rah, rah. And I kind of went, wow, man, what a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah. Now, I understand where he was coming from, and I get how terrible that situation is to be, and I've certainly been in that same space. I understand what it's like. But all that does is just scare people away. It just makes mm. it worse. The, the, the jungle telegraph, the you know, the bush drums, everyone starts saying, oh, I heard that the business is yeah. going to close down. Rah, rah. It doesn't help the situation at all to be saying that. It's far better to be kind of doing something about it and understanding that that headspace is actually going to make the business close mm-hmm. more than anything else. And, and I guess that's really really where I'm trying to come from on this one is if there's stuff going on in your business and you think no one from the outside is, is onto it, they are onto it, and you've got to kind of really be making a point of changing what's happening, whether it's you you know you have run out of steam or you're, you're doing it tough financially or whatever it might be, you've got, to, you've got to drive that forward and you've got to do something about it because it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy if you don't do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the other side of that coin, the guy at the news agent may have been telling that lady, although you were in earshot maybe he didn't see you because you didn't have that shirt on you might have had something (laughs) yeah yeah uh (laughs) shrinking violet but he might have been picking her as someone who he thought may be able to help so it's such a two-sided coin because you you sit on something and let it stew then that becomes a pressure cooker and just goes nowhere except explodes uh but yes definitely fix it definitely address it you know, I think you and I have both said on alternate occasions, like we've got to get it out of our comfort zone. We've got to um, we've got to continue to d- develop, do personal development, seek mm. ideas from elsewhere uh, because it gets it, it gets us out of ruts. It does, and I think that we're, we underestimate consumers is what this comes back to. We underestimate our customers. We, th- we think that, you know, often they don't really kind of get what's mm. going on because we're doing all this stuff yeah, behind yeah. the scenes, but but they do, you know. I mean, again, talk about webinars. I've certainly listened to some webinars. I go, gee whiz, he sounds flat today. Yeah. really sounds kind of down. He didn't really kind of believe what he was saying as much, you know. Uh, you know, whatever's going on in his world, you know, or, or you're uh, – I think that that's the thing. That, that's the second part of this for me is don't underestimate our customers you know don't mm. underestimate the people that are buying from us in whatever shape or form it is you know i i think we can we can work with people and they get that you know we can't be high up all the time and we'd all have challenges in business that's what we do um and i think that you can actually engage people and say yeah it's tough at the moment but we're doing this or yeah. it's you know we're, we're trying to make it trying something new I, and i think that that's a game. When you have great connection with your customers, and from a you know from a sense that we talk about a lot, I think that overcomes a lot of evils, mm. um, and and it, they can actually work to help you, and you know you can overcome challenges, etc. But I I just think that sometimes we underestimate the 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 importance and the connection of that relationship. It's like when a favourite business goes broke, you know, and closes down a store, whether it be a restaurant or a sporting store, or you know, and there's yeah, that yeah. real sense of loss that people feel. Um, I, I guess it's, um, for me, understanding and perhaps trying to articulate a little bit better about the relationship and the, the importance of it. But also, you know, you as a business owner, you know, I always use the term that you're the business barometer. If you're down, everyone's down. If you're up, everyone's up. But more importantly, I guess you've got to address any issues that are going to you know, portray you in a negative light that are going to make your customers kind of be a little bit fearful that you're not going to be around. Do you know so one of the sense? things that... Um 
It's a slight digression, but it is relevant. Paddy Lund, the dentist I interviewed last week, um, this week, he, um, what he did, he identified, he came out of his this very dark space, or he's actually still in his dark space, and but decided he's going to turn this business around and make it a happy place, mm. which is kind of interesting because as a dentist, uh, that's generally not a happy place. It's a place of pain for Absolutely. anyone going to a dentist, yeah. you know, place of pain. So him and his staff identified 30, 37 um, hot points, 37 mm. p- p- bits of the business, places within the business that weren't happy that were full of fear or mm-hmm. darkness or whatever it is from things like um this is kind of, i am digressing now because it's not actually about how you feel but i think it's interesting anyway like he d- identified the smell of novocaine as being mm. something in the business in a, in a dentistry that was just like that d- people freak out triggers mm. immediately fear so he mm. started creating dental buns, um, cooking dental buns and, and having a dental bun with his client, as, and he mm. called his client's guests, his patient's guests, uh, and having a dental bun. So <laughs> what, what he did, it isn't, it isn't a digression, because what he did do was go, you know what, he, he actually sat down at a point in time and looked inside him and asked the big question, what makes me happy? Not what mm. makes my customers happy, not what makes my staff happy, but what will make me happy? And if mm. I'm happy, then everyone else will be happy. And he said, oh, I would love to sit down with my patients and have a cup of tea and something to eat before we do the work and get mm. to know where they're at and how they're feeling and if they've got any questions. So, yeah, interesting. And all of a sudden, the rest is history. He all of a sudden created a business where he's working two days a week, a week and, in, and earning three times as much. Extraordinary man, and it comes back to thing. I think as business owners, I'm starting to to suggest to people, and when I'm presenting that again, it's about the business owners. We got to step up and not kind of get caught in you know um, a bit of malaise at times, or you know it's, it's tough being in business. Yeah, it's tough at working for someone else as well. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's it's it can be tough, but it's it really is so much about tough the headspace. Doing funny business with you, mate. It's exhausting doing funny exhausting. business. You know, you're a lucky guy though. I must say to be able. To spend an hour of his time with me once a month. But, All right. But- well, we've knocked out that very dour topic, and I reckon uh, it was a good one, and I think it's a good, nice little wake-up call, a little tap on the shoulder, as I say. Uh, absolutely. You want to talk about switching off. How do you switch off, or don't oh, you? I, I believe this was one of your topics. Mine really? was the next one. Yeah, this is one of yours. How oh, do you switch off? I, I'm number four, business isolation as oh, part of my You're days. throwing it back on me. Well, you know, but switching off is great. What do you do? How do you switch oh, off? Interesting. Maybe I, maybe it was my topic because I don't. I'm not very good at switching oh. off. Uh, I know you head over to Green Island and whack on the Hawaiian shirt and probably drink colourful drinks with umbrellas hanging off them. But um, I don't know, mate. I um, Ever since, even like I've been in my own business now for about eight years. Prior to that, it was in corporate life. And when I was in corporate life, I had that, you know, that nine to five or eight to six mentality and... It was work to be done in that period of time. And even then, I'd take work home. And I never really, really lost it. And now it's kind of amped because mm. it's my own business. And I do. I don't lit- I don't walk out of the office. And I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but I don't walk out of my home office and go, okay, my work here is done. Um, you know, generally, I'll be thinking about something that's business-related. Not, not 24-7, but... Uh, yeah, switching off is an interesting one. Um, mm. I do make a point of turning the phone off or leaving the phone behind because even having that kind of that connection to the rest of the world sometimes just gives me the ear. It's so nice to leave that behind, but I'm, I'm not as good as it, good at it as I could be. Mm. You know, it's it's a tough one though, isn't it? I think uh, for me, the key is figuring out what is your thing, you know, that recharges your batteries, yeah, as opposed to maybe switching off. You know, I, I think that that's what I think is difficult for some people. They don't know mm. what is it that recharges my batteries. What is it that actually, you know, makes me feel better about myself or, or lets me feel, you know, rejuvenated. And I think if you don't know what that is, um, it's difficult. I, I remember I came out of a really, really very stressful period in my life where I was just a complete workaholic. I wrote a book, How to Have a Business and a Life. And, uh, and, and I remember, you know, part of that gig was I wasn't going to work weekends anymore. And, uh, and I was working 6 a.m. till midnight every day, seven Ooh, days a week. Ridiculous. You know, yeah. you're not sustainable. You just kill no. yourself. And so that was the thing. I thought, right, I work Monday to Friday. My first weekend off, I remember it was a Saturday morning and I'm sitting around at home and it's like, it's five o'clock. I get up at five o'clock. It's what I do. So by 5.15, I've had a cup of tea going, 
what am I going to do today? (laughs) And I've got this whole day ahead of me to figure out what the hell am I going to do? And I had no idea. Well, what do you do when you have a day off? What do you do to relax? I thought, okay, well, I'll do a few things. I thought I'll, I'll, I'll go and have breakfast or do something. Right. And then of course it's like, it's, 6.15, you know, mm-hmm. and, and the, the second hand is, is taking it out yeah, of yeah, yeah. And it took me, I think, months and months to actually understand how to relax and how to how to really recharge my batteries. And I, I think I think business owners in general really struggle with this because our business is a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week thing. You know, you, you can't really just, you know, if you're thinking about it, you're thinking about it. I won't think about my business. I won't think about my business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't think about my you're business. You're thinking about it. You know, damn it, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's such a part of it. Or you get two business owners in a room, and the first thing we start oh, talking yeah, about yeah. is our business. Yeah. You know, how are you going? You're making money. What's going on? Is it tough out there? Good out there? Yeah. You start having those predictable kind of conversations. But, uh, you know, for me, it is definitely things like understanding. I, it's mainly switching off my brain, and I, and I find that physical activity is obviously good for that. I like nature. I'm a bit of a nature boy, so it's part of my do you, you know, nude up out in nature, or uh, What's that, mate? do you nude up, or do you just get out there and I've got a couple of very funny stories about nuding up out in nature if you really want to go there. Please. You know, Please. I, one, I was with a buddy of mine yeah. going to a place called the Boulders, which is this beautiful freshwater kind of creek. Yeah. Very, very cold. And he's a Swiss guy, so they're always naked. You know, so yeah. anyway, we, this we is decided. a little bit broke back mountain, but go on. It's a bit broke. I know. It's Erwin, and he's, he's funny. He's like 75, 80 years old, and he's a polar bear <laughs> guy. You know, he's forever jumping into cold water. Anyway, yeah. so we've jumped into this creek, and we're sitting in this creek. It's freaking freezing. Starkers. And, uh, and it's, you and, know, when Starkers in the creek. Starkers, you know. Oh, this is gold. This beautiful place. Anyway, whilst we're in the water, this tour bus pulls up. Golden. And it's like filled with 75, 80 year old women (laughs) start piling out of this bus and setting up on the bank of this creek where we're in the water, Uh... like they're having a picnic. And of course, they're they're setting up for the duration. This is not a casual, we're setting up for 15 minutes. (laughs) Erwin's skin and bones, he's turned blue. He's going to pass out at any stage of the game. I'm freezing. At some stage, there was no choice for Had us to, but to both walk out We're of the room through these ladies, Last. through get through to our towels and Morning. stuff. They gave us a round of applause. Gold. It was just hilarious. That Classic, gold. beautiful, hilarious. I, I, I have a uh, my late father in law. Um, he was a very large man, and uh, they lived in a city in a suburb in Melbourne called South Yarra. And in in, in the mornings, uh, often a crisp spring morning. Um, There'd be hot air balloons, you know, on the over, going yeah, around the I've city. Seen them. Yeah, okay. So he wandered out about six a.m. one crisp spring morning for a little oh, no. dip in the pool because there's never anyone around then. Ever, <laughs> everyone's asleep, and all he could hear was, "Oh, look, look!" Ah, ah. And he goes, "Where is that coming from?" And he looked up, and there was a hot air balloon about fifty meters above the pool, <laughs> trying to get a bit of uh, trying to get a bit of oh, height. Dude. So yeah, you've yeah. got to watch that nude workout in nature. How on earth? Oh, because you, you were telling us you like to switch off in nature. So um. N- Nature's a thing there. I mean, you know, something that I find, though, too, is also managing during the day. That, uh, something that was really pivotal for me in terms of de-stressing and starting nicer was that, and you and I have spoken about this, I think, in a few other places, was just holding out on checking your email. I try and hold out till 9, 10 o'clock in the morning before I check my email, and I just find that, it just by you know rolling over and checking your email, you're stressed from the minute you you, you touch your phone. I just find having that two or three hours just to get yeah, my right. thing together. My that whole would cause, day is that would so cause much many better. a business person anxiety. I know, I know, and it's very hard to break that routine. I was a mm. wake up at three o'clock in the morning, check your emails kind of mm. guy for a number of years, and I just kind of, I'm just over it, you know, because I realised so many of the messages, none of them are that important. I, mm. I'm an author. I don't, Thanks, I'm not a brain one of mine might have been there. You know, so what's that, mate? One of my emails might have been there. That might have been important. I doubt it. You know, mm. I doubt it. I would just delete it anyway. You <laughs> delete. Know. You know, Come back. Like select or delete. <laughs> See if he sends it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of nudity, mm. Flying Solo have a work in the nude day, which I think is quite fun. I and, agree. Uh, you know, I, I, and then they ask you to actually take a photo of yourself working in the nude and, and they post it on their Facebook page, which I did last year. Uh, <laughs> I positioned my microphone uh, quite cleverly, Griffo, if you, you know you, what I mean. You use a lapel microphone, don't you? 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's really big. A little bit of presenter humour there, folks. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, lapel quite. microphones are very small. Hey, Just make sure. Hey, Griffo, Griffo, don't explain your joke. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> it's a worse thing. There's nothing oh worse than somebody explaining your joke. You, I thought you were better than that. <laughs> no, you know that. Hey, listen, while we're on the, the topic of, um, of uh, well, I mentioned Flying Solo. They're a partner of this show. Uh, I would love it if we could just give our sponsors a little bit of love because we couldn't sure. have these nude conversations uh, without without the help of Net Registry and Swiftly. So um, I don't know whether you know, but Net Registry uh, make this show possible. Have done for a couple of years. Love the net. You love you love the net. Hey, mm, love they, the net. Done a bit of work, written articles for them over the years. Yes. I presented at their launch of a magazine a while back, a new format and stuff like that. That is like a that, Ripper so. magazine. That's called Net Magazine, mm, uh, N E double T. I write for that each month. And in fact, next month, they are going to do a podcast feature article. And um, what I love about it is that you get it. You get a six month free subscription to it. Just whatever you buy from Net Registry, it could yeah, be a domain so name. Cool. Mm. And it actually is of a very high quality. So, uh, yeah, Net Registry, pretty much there, mate, to get your online marketing sorted, as I say. Beautiful. And um, I would encourage people listening to this to head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and click on the Net Registry button, which will take them to the online blog. And they can ask any online marketing question they want. And Net Registry will answer it. No sell. No nice. sell. Nice, killing your net. Just value. Do you call them net? Do you have a brief? Yeah. Oh, everything? that's cool, you know. Like, I'm just kind of cool. You, you probably yeah. haven't figured that out yet, you know. No, well, you've but, told me you're funny, and now you know, you're funny me you're and cool. cool you know? <laughs> but I, I, I can, and even with the guys at Flying Solo, I love the Flying Solo guys. I mean, I've got an article, a couple of articles going in with those guys soon about how to do interviews. Ah, so, I must like, read them. How, how to prepare for interviews, how to deliver a killer interview, how to do interviews on the spot, you know, all that kind of right. interview, interview, interview type stuff. So, um, uh, because more and more people are having that opportunity to be interviewed. I mean, you're a master of interviews. What do you, what do you, you know, think? So- I, I, I love interviewing. Oh, clearly, I mm. love interviewing. It's at the heart of this show. But um, I often, when I'm preparing my interviews for each week's episode, one question that I, I continue to have this internal debate every week is, should I open up with uh, what I'd call a relaxing break the ice question or do we go straight in to, so tell me about, you know, how mm. you built the business? You know, so a break the ice question is, for example, what's your superpower? Mm-hmm. And it generally results in a bit of a laugh, a bit of banter. You can feel the, the guest relaxing into it. And then we slowly, and then it'll, just, it'll generally take us somewhere that ends up in a business conversation versus... Um, I think if you listen to the Paddy Lund interview uh, just done, I couldn't really find I, – I just felt as though I needed to go straight into a business discussion. Mm-hmm. What, what, what's your view? I like it. I've, I've been interviewed many, many, many times, and I've got to say I really do love the ones that are a little bit more quirky, that are a little bit that, mm. that make me laugh, that mm. make me think a little bit. I, th- I think it just relaxes you mm. when you're being interviewed because it is quite stressful to be interviewed because you want to give the right answer and you want to – There's, know, you there's wanna, a first world problem. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but you really, you do. I mean, for me, it's about you You kind of a bit, what are they going to ask, you know, if you haven't yeah. got the questions ahead of time. So when someone does kind of throw that question at you left of centre, it, it's really nice. I, I find, and it also sets a really a more fun and relaxed kind of mood mm. for the interview, which I think then you get to see, you get a better insight into the person, okay. you both enjoy it more. Okay, I so like there, I agree. So therefore, should I tell my guest ahead of time, that I'm going no. to ask you what your superpower is to start with, or no. I'm going to ask you what's your biggest fear, or what keeps you up at night. No, no. just I don't think so, because then it becomes a scripted answer. Mm. You know, they've thought about it long and hard. You mm. know, and I go, yeah, it's you know, I'm a f- terrified of koala bears, you know, yeah. koalas. You yeah. know, and it's like it's kind of it, yeah. it feels too scripted. I think it's got to be spontaneous. Yeah, you know, and are, are, you, are you scared of koalas? No, no, oh, I've overcome just that fear now. So you know, I've, I've come a long way. You know. Yeah. Oh, serious question, because I want to get back. This is getting far too frivolous, this conversation. <laughs> I want to get back into some kind of, you know, okay, sure. hardcore. What, what are you scared of? What am I scared of? 
you say spiders, I'll come up and belt you. No, no, I'm not scared of any animal type things, you know. I've never Tough been guy. scared of sharks. Well, I'm a commercial diver, you know, so oh, yeah, if yeah, I was scared yeah. of sharks, oh, it wouldn't case. have been a career choice, you know, <laughs> to do that. And crocodiles and things, you know, North Queen, I wrestle a crocodile every morning, you know, just to get to the car. <laughs> Standard stuff. We eat box jellyfish for breakfast, nice. you know, yeah. it's just, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I intermittently, I, I have a fear of flying at times, which uh-huh. is great when you fly as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not so not so bad these days. I have a fear of people not laughing at my jokes, which of course oh, is wow. completely that'd, unfounded. That'd come true, you know, um, in any shape or form. Mm. And um, you know, yeah, that's about it, really. That fear of flying is interesting. Sophie, my wife, is absolutely terrified of flying, and oh, I've never oh. ever. What's that? Poor darling. That's yeah, a and thing, I, I've yeah. never thought about it, and. I've re- I, just the last we went to Italy over Christmas and did a fair bit of flying and kind of I, some of it rubbed off on me. So coming back from China last week, I actually had a moment. I had a moment where I actually dissected the fact that, gee, aren't these people from Boeing clever? They've made this room look like it's not 35,000 feet in the air, but in actual fact, you know, three metres below us is, is it's nothing. It's a long way down. It's a long yeah. way down. And I, I did actually had this moment. I was trying to go to sleep and uh, the old heart increased. And, yeah, so that's interesting. That's what they invented red wine for, uh-huh. you know, to help overcome the fear of flying. But I don't know. I mean, I, I'm better at it. But again, it relinks back, though, funnily enough, to that how do you switch off and that relaxation kind of thing is being able to learn. And I just reprogram myself to overcome the fact that being on a plane is not a fearful thing, but as a positive thing. And looking at, well, I can disconnect. I can get stuff done. I can I can close my eyes and have a sleep. I can read a book. I can relax. So I sign look forward books. to it as opposed to being, yeah, write a book. No, no, you know, sign. Um, you could sign a few books. I could sign um, a whole pile of books. Good point. I like you could that. stand up and, and deliver some kind of stand-up comedy routine, being the funny guy you are. We could are. start doing presentations on aeroplanes. <laughs> I reckon there's an opportunity there. I like that. What do they call it? A uh, What's the a, um, an audience where they can't go anywhere? Yeah, a, a captive audience. A captive it, audience. It would be, like be like a scene out of Flying High, I think, for anyone who remembers that movie. That would be Hilarious. great. And the guy slowly he pours petrol on himself and then yeah. holds the match above his head. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, too much frivolity. Let's talk business isolation. What is it? How do you cope? Well, isn't that a funny kind of a topic? I remember doing an Hilarious. interview talking about interviews um, a few years ago, probably, I don't know, seven or eight years ago with Rob Gerrish from Flying Solo, mm-hmm. and it was around business isolation. What is it? What's the challenge? Um, and, and to me, I guess the easiest way to, to, to identify it, and it's a problem because there's so many people now working from home. This is a really new phenomenon. There's many, many people, and I think in the next few years, we're going to see piles more people working from home. Terrible English, but you know what I mean. Um mm-hmm. And that whole concept being that, you know, we're working away. You and I both work from home. We understand what it's like. You can spend a whole day at home. If you don't have a reason to go out, you could spend a whole week at home or a whole fortnight at home. And and, and you can become somewhat isolated. Fortunately... We live in an internet-based world where we can have that connection, that social media side of things. You can kind of get out digitally or virtually, I guess, is perhaps the way to look at it. Probably not digitally. That would be weird. That would be like the Matrix. Yeah, that's right. There's a whole lot of ones and zeros walking out the door. You're more across this, you know, this newfangled kind of intranets yeah, than, uh, that than I am. But, yeah. uh, but, but I look at that and go, well, you know, like you have to learn how to overcome that. Just as we talked about switching off and all the rest of it, I, I see this trend in the world where people are saying, well, you know, isolation's a problem because not just because you're on your own. It's not just about being oh, it's sad that I'm on my own. It's a lot more about the fact of you need stimulation. You need to kind of be getting ideas and support from other people, hence the rise in, in co-working space. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people, I'm just editing some books around that concept at the moment or helping some people with writing them around the the benefits. And I read this one great synopsis just talking about all the benefits of being able to go in and work in a co-working or a shared facility. There was so much more than just the idea of, oh, I just want to hang around and have a cup of tea with Timbo. Yeah. But it was around the whole brainstorming, good. the health and well-being, the sharing of ideas, the learning of skills, the... Um, 
you know, business development, the the need to dress up and, and actually, you know, make sure you have a shave and iron a shirt mm-hmm. and, you know, um, you know, do all of those kind of things, the social interactions. If you're not careful, you spend too much time being isolated, you do start to lose your social skills. You do, there's a lot of things that you lose. That's why I say to people, I could never be a full-time writer, just writing, I'd stop washing, stop shaving, I'd be mm, the guy geez. that goes and gets his milk in the dressing gown, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is not what do you be mean? Good what, one. what do you mean I've got a dressing gown on? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> I dressed up. I in put the, the dressing the gown bag. on. You'd walk past the pop-up store and there's Griffo, feet up on the milk crate, <laughs> dressing gown sort of coming under not the open. middle. Never not, a good look. Pretty. Yeah, <laughs> by the end of it, you'd be having the dressing gown on backwards and just slurping on a latte. That'd be just a one in the, stuck in the bean bag. They wouldn't send the ambulance, mate. They'd send the bloke in the with a white <laughs> truck. You know those ones? I, I know, I know. Yeah, I hear you, mate. Well, isolation is becoming a bigger... I was going to say bigger problem. It's becoming more prolific. Whether it is a problem, mm. it's depending on how you, you manage it. I, I work, you know, solo. Uh, I make a point of getting out and... Um, going and, you know, scheduling meetings. No, I'm not scheduling meetings. Going and seeing people, catching up for a feed, going to gym, you know, mm. making sure. I, there's different ways of, of losing the isolation, isn't there? You don't. Ha- it doesn't mean you have to work with other people. Um, yeah, that's right. I, I think, though, too, that from a business perspective, perspective though, what, part of that is, is if you're not talking to people in a businessy sense on a regular basis, you can lose a bit of that. Yeah. You know, like we can have isolation can be wander down to the shops, you know, go to the gym, whatever, but it's a different kind of interaction. And I think that that's the point that I kind of made in the article I did a long time ago was around that whole idea. That's why you've got to still go to networking events. You've got to go to places where there are other business people because you can actually start to lose your sales skills you can actually start to lose i believe you know some of your interaction in your business Mm. you know um your business communication skills which then make things a little bit more challenging you know in some way so it's just a different perspective and i think there are people at times i get an interesting amount of conversation around this in different places where people go i i I am feeling isolated at home and i want to go but where do i go what do i do you know i've been to the coffee shop that's kind of nice but all it is i'm isolated at the coffee shop Mm. you know or i've been to the gym but okay i'm working out a sweat but i'm not talking business so so i I think that that's where things like forums as strange as it is and it's still online but it's still that connection that interaction oh it's amazing Uh, i mean i see that in the small business big marketing forum where like there is just this amazing Wonderful sense of belonging uh, and community. So, uh, and of all else fails, mate, a little little bit of nude work out in nature. Can, uh, <laughs> Never can, underestimate the nudie work. Correct. Hey, Griffo, one last topic before we do. Do want to mention Swiftly, who also make this uh, this, sure. this show happen. Swiftly. Swiftly. Uh, do you know what Swiftly are? I do. We've, we've spoken about Swiftly. We I love them. For, for small changes. Small yeah. design fixes fast. Send your business cards through with a new phone number yep. or a like new I this. I could take a photo of you right now in that shirt. What was the shirt? What's the flower? It's the orchid. The, the orchid, orchid shirt. And I could go, oh, you know, I'm not overly – I don't like the colour of it. For my, I do, but I could, I could pretend I didn't. I could upload that little JPEG to Swiftly. They could change the colour of it. They could, you know, put a small business big marketing logo on it, which I think would look pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know what the really cool thing they do? They, they can actually take your logo. They do seasonal versions of your logo. So uh, nice. what's coming up? Anzac Day is coming up in Australia. So right. this Friday, you could send your logo to Swiftly and they could put um, a, a soldier slouch hat on your oh, yeah, logo. Cool. Or if it was Christmas, they could put a Santa hat and they can they can seasonalize your logo for $19. And then you just use that for a week while it's in that time of the year and then you nick it off and put your, your old one back. That's clever, isn't it? Amazing. And what wonderful resources, you know, that we have yes. these days, that kind of stuff. I, I'm a bit old school still. I, I still go to an ATM machine. Yeah, you are I still can't believe money comes out. I, I, I find that one <laughs> of the most fascinating things on the face of the planet. But but the more I see things like Swiftly and all the rest, of it, I just go, and it's just so cool and so mm. clever mm. and so easy and so, so easy. quick and yeah. so cheap. You yeah. know, There's I a mean, lot of adjectives there. You might want to- has it ever been better, though? Has there ever been a better time to be a small business owner, no. to be an entrepreneur? No. I, 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 I honestly, I know people kind of talk a bit about that, wax lyrically about it, so I like to do that as well. Yeah. And just go, it is, it is an extraordinary, extraordinary. time. There's yeah, so yeah. many resources. There's so many ways. You and I do this kind of stuff. I, I just think all the rules are being rewritten when it comes right. to how we do business, where we do business, when we do business. I, I Every day I kind of shake my head and go, this is extraordinary. It was a great book. 
book written by the guys who started 37 Signals, which is the company that had Basecamp and High Rise and all those uh, project management tools. And they wrote a book called Rework. And Rework would be about mm. five years old now. It was a fantastic book. It'd be actually interesting to go back and revisit that because it basically said the rules of business have been rewritten. And, you know, five years on, that I can imagine there being the need to rewrite that book because, again, I mean, there's just so many amazing things that we can we can do as small business owners. Well, and, and that's a really interesting point, though, in its own right, is to, if you go back and read some of these old books, like yeah. I reread old business books often, you know, clearly I need to get life while I'm naked in nature most <laughs> yeah, yeah, of the time, yeah. I might add. Yeah. But, but again, when I, I read one when I was 30, now I'm 48 or whatever, and you look at it and go, wow, that's fantastic advice. Mm-hmm. And, and yet at the time, I maybe didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So as an author, and I've got to say this, just go back and read these books. You know, mm-hmm. If you're sitting on your shelf, don't let them get dust. Go back and revisit them. You're in a different headspace now. You're older, you're more experienced, whatever it is. I mean, I read Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Oh, yeah. I read that when I was a kid, you know, it feels like, I don't know, however long ago it was when it first came out, it was quite a while ago, and I read it now, and I go, it's one of the best books I've ever read, it's just fabulous, uh, yet I didn't quite get it, I wasn't perhaps, I don't know. I, you got to read things, I mean, reading a book once, that book I've just, I showed you before we, mm. we came on air today about uh, Real Leaders Don't Use PowerPoint, I mean, I love that book, and that's a book you've got to read three or four times to really, I mean, it, it, albeit it's a business book and there's learnings in there, but... Yeah, reading a book more than once is a good thing. I'm Griffo. Uh, listeners, swiftly.com is where you can go and get all that lovely uh, design love real fast. Now, the last point, I am. this will be show one episode 184. I'm 16 episodes, therefore, away from uh, episode 200. Mm. I have... I am yet to make a hoo-ha about episode 50 or 100 or 150, and I'm wondering... Whether I should. Now, I, every now, you see brands having third birthday celebrations and, you know, giving 10% off and doing all that. But I just wonder, you know, what's in it for the listener? And if I were to do something, I'd want there to be value in it for the listener. One thing I thought before I get your point of view is that I could get listeners to record something. I don't know. Maybe is it an answer to a question, or just send me send me send me a recording up to a minute long, and I'll stitch them all together, and it can be the listeners' show. Maybe mm. they can share a marketing idea or whatever they wanted to do, and they could do it that way. Uh, there's an idea. Should I just let it pass, or no. should I no? No, well, you, you, you celebrate long and loud, mate. Absolutely, and loud. absolutely loud and proud. I, I think that it's a huge milestone. You know, without a doubt, 200 Why? shows. Why? Because you've done an extraordinary number of interviews. There's a lot of funny in there, I might add, as well. Ten episodes of enormous hilarity in there as well. You know, but but but, but the sheer amount of information, the following, I, I don't go anywhere around Australia without someone coming out to me and saying, hey, listen to Timbo Reid, love funny business, love, you know, love the marketing, small business, big marketing podcast, you know, just love it, love it, love it. I think if you're not celebrating, you actually, I, I think it's a bit unfair on your followers. I think right. it's a bit unfair on your okay. fans. I, I I think people want the chance to celebrate with us. And again, folks, tell me if you think otherwise, mm. but I think I think we should definitely be having a celebration and an acknowledgement of it. And I don't think we do enough of that in this country as entrepreneurs in Australia. I mean, in other parts of the world, I think people do, but celebrate your milestones. I, I think it's an extraordinary achievement, mate. I, I, I think it's okay. a real credit for you. It's a huge body of work Thank you. and it should be celebrated. I so, want to come so, to the party. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you. And it certainly, the, the thing that you said resonated the most was, you know, I'd be doing disservice to my listeners, and I would never, you know, never want to do that. Why is two hundred? Why is two hundred and fifty a better number? Is is should I wait to five hundred? Should I celebrate every show as if it's the last? Well, you never know. You, <laughs> you know, know. I mean, there's a sense of optimism in there. Today yeah. has been dark. You know, yes. treat it like it's the last. Correct. I think milestones are kind of nice. You know, right. I mean. 100, you haven't celebrated 50, 100, or 150. Well, you've got to celebrate something sooner or later. 200's, uh, you know, just from now on, there'll be 200% more information. We'll be 200% more funny. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it'll, it'll not hard. just, yeah, you just got to do it. I, you know, okay. I'm sorry, it's not negotiable. It's got to be All right. celebrated. All right. Well, listeners, if you agree, if you don't agree, let me know. Go to the show notes for episode 184 
and, and let me know. And if you think I should celebrate it or we should celebrate it, then what should we do? I'd love some ideas. I don't mind the idea of, of getting you to send in your audio and maybe it's a marketing tip or whatever you want to share. That would be fun. But, yeah, I would love to uh, – I don't want to necessarily only own the idea and mm. uh, I'll be happy to go loud and proud. So, you know, and maybe you Yeah, maybe that's a way to do it, isn't it? Throw it open to the people that make the show. I mean, if no one was listening, there wouldn't be a show. And I know that can be a little bit cliched, but it's really true. I, yeah. I think that – yeah, give it back to the folks. Uh, I, I think that's a, a wonderful, wonderful idea. So some requests, some strange things. You could always do the t- predictable clip show. How <laughs> terrible would that be? What's you know, that? When the, 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 the day oh, where you clip together the highlights of the top oh. 200, you know, of the first 200 episodes. There's, there's some pretty what, good dad jokes. My listeners every now and then remind me that I'm pretty good at the dad jokes. So I yeah. could just do, you know. 200. Um, a whole show of Tim Reed dad, dad jokes. Dad jokes. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, pretty. Yeah. Not no, pretty. All not right, buddy. Thing. Well, listen, those monkeys I can start to hear in the background are getting a little bit uh, a bit antsy. You're sitting there. You've been sitting there under that tree like the big, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Um uh, oh, gosh, uh, the big ape. I'm trying to think I'm, of. Um... I'm just going to watch you. <laughs> yeah, later on. And I'm going to say, folks, that Tim hasn't said this, but Timbo has been coughing and spluttering, spluttering. like a cheap two stroke engine. He's been sick as a dog. And I said to him before, uh-huh. mate, do you really want to do this? And like, a, like, a, like a true veteran, <laughs> a soldier, he's battled on there I through this been entire. Hitting that. I've been traumatizing the... podcast. As he as he stops smiling, never. You know, he's, he's a yeah, you know, and he's a man with the flu we all know what that means you yeah, know he could well, have died at any moment during that podcast i have podcast. been riding the fart button on my microphone with <laughs> like no tomorrow you you've seen me blowing my nose and sneezing have, no hilarious. one else has <laughs> I, I wonder whether we have been we have recorded the video of this too so it may well just find its way onto youtube probably go viral griffo i don't know now mate enough enough silliness Enough seriousness. That has been another episode of Funny Business. Is there any you? I'm going to give you have spoken. I tell you what, mate. I don't know whether you've drawn breath. I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to give you the length of a tweet to wrap things up. You've got 140 characters. The monkeys are getting noisy in the background, so you want to hurry, mate. I'm going to leave it on on our note here. I'm going to say, folks, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. You know, just just be loud and proud of everything that you're doing. That's uh, in business, in life, in podcasting. You know, that's my take on today. Well, mate, if that's 140 characters, I'll go he. I was expecting a couple of hashtags in there as well, but you might not know what they are. Hey, listeners, we love your work. That's been Andrew Griffiths right there. He's a, just a very successful small business author, and I'm Timbo Reed, just a bloody rouse about, you know, and uh, together we have brought you Episode 10 of Funny Business. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, marketing is everything, and everything is marketing. See you later. See you, you folks. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reed. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. 